This is the Parenting IQ podcast where our mission is to equip you during your child's academic years to bring learning to the daily little moments. I'm your host, Dr. Kelly Cagle, and I want to welcome you to season four, Little Moments, Big Impacts. Once a month, I'll be highlighting experiences from various school models, and today I'm talking to MJ Cash, who is a homeschooling mom of three I met at a Wild and Free conference. She lives in Nashville, Tennessee, and is a strong worshiper of Jesus, which uh, right off the bat, we were like this. And for my Enneagram fans, she's a textbook seven. So if you know what I'm talking about, then you'll really know what I'm talking about. And she spends every day trying to thoroughly enjoy her limited time given on earth. MJ, thanks for joining us today. You bet. I'm so excited to be here, Kelly. Thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. So here's the thing. In a split second, I knew that I could count on her to really give a good glimpse of the homeschooling life. And so I asked her, I reached out to her, hey, can you get on here and talk to us? Give us a general idea a glimpse at your day-to-day into your homeschooling life. And she was like, yeah, I have no idea what you want me to talk about, but let's do it. (laughs) So MJ, as we get going, give us the dynamic of your family, how many kids you've got. I said three already, but their ages and who does the schooling, what that, what your family dynamic is like. Yeah. So I have three kids. Uh, Their ages are, I have a son who's eight. He's my oldest. And then I have two girls, a six-year-old and a two-year-old. So I have two school age kids right now and then a little toddler to just, you know, throw fun in our day. Um, I am a wife of a law enforcement officer, so I do a lot of our parenting solo. Um, Mm. For anyone that knows those schedules, the schedules are crazy and they're very busy and they work a lot. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm homeschooling the kids here at home um, most of the time, although I like to say I don't feel like their primary teacher. I feel like I am very much so just like immersing them into the world and mm-hmm. the world is their teacher. Like yeah. I I do stuff. Yes, of course we have to and we love to as mothers, but I mean the world teaches my kids much more than I do. So mm-hmm. um I I like to use the term facilitator. Yes, right? I you're facilitate the, them. Right. You're the overseer Correct. of their curiosity. You're just guiding them through this process of of life. And that's something that we've experienced ourselves in our homeschooling journey this year. This is our first year. Mm-hmm. And that's what I told you when I met you. Was it September? So like right after our journey yeah. started. And and you know, it was one of those things that for us, we have part-time homeschooled, but we were still given what we needed to do. So right. it wasn't homeschooling. And then I met you and you're like, yeah, no, this is what we do. Uh, you actually told me, I think we touched the textbook. How many times last year? Uh, I don't know if I'm legally allowed to say this. <laughs> you can get it off the record. I, I you think, don't have to say it. no, I think probably, I mean, 20 ish times last year. Yeah. Yeah. We had a really, I mean, that's just, we just live life, man. That's right. And, and it's something, the motto that we have in our company is using daily moments as learning opportunities. Mm -hmm. And as you said, the world, there's so much more to learning than book work, right? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Most of learning is not book work. So yeah, I agree a hundred percent. Okay. So what made you guys choose to homeschool? So I'll start by saying that my husband and I both were, uh, very happy public school kids. Uh, that's how we grew up our whole lives. Technically, my husband did have elementary. He was a uh, he was in Montessori school, so it's a little mm-hmm. different. Um, but I mean, for the majority of our schooling, we were public school kids. We loved our experiences. We had a lot of fun in school. Um, it wasn't until we were about probably like engaged and starting to talk about having a family and that kind of thing that I started to become friends with some people who were further down the line than us and homeschooled, mm-hmm. and started to think, huh. I think that's the route I want to go. Um, The biggest thing for me was I wanted to be my kid's primary influence. Mm. And I wanted to be able to establish a really, really strong foundation in our belief system, in our morals, also just our mindset about how to approach the world um, before the world got an opportunity Mm -hmm. to try Mm -hmm. to 
break it down. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't think that you can get a super solid foundation in just those first five years before they're sent off to school. Like mm. they, it, it's going to take more like 10, 12, you know, to really be able to establish yeah. that. So that was the first thing. Um, I definitely was on board prior to my husband. I had to start kind of talking to him about it. But by the time our first son was born, we both were pretty locked in that this was the route we were going to take. And now, <laughs> now, you know, however many, eight years later and several years into homeschooling, I'm going to be honest and say, I don't think I'm cut out for the school life. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think I could do it. My kids could do it. Mm-hmm. I don't think I could. So, you know, there's a lot of things that makes it, make it roll with our lives very well. As a Enneagram 7, I love to travel. I love freedom. I don't like to be bound. Yeah. And I can't imagine waking up at like 6 o'clock with my feet hit the ground. We got to, hey, go, 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 go. Yeah. It's time for school. We got to get ready. Da, 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 da. I would be my teacher's least favorite parent. 100%. My kids would yeah. be late all the time. <laughs> and I'd, I'd be pulling them out of school constantly saying, you know what? We have a trip to go on. Sorry. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. No, I think it's important to go back a little bit and highlight what you said that you guys grew up a certain way you didn't necessarily see anything wrong with your upbringing with your school experiences you had good experiences back then but I don't know how old you are but I think we're similar ages right if you kind of look at us and kind of our our story uh, we probably are similar ages back then is from when we were in school is really different than what's going on now. Mm -hmm. And, and not that it's all bad. It's not all bad, but there are a lot of different political agendas and a lot of other things that are being infused into curriculum. And as you said, even the time, you know, that hasn't changed, but that's also another thing that's important to highlight now as you become parents, it's a different life stage, different things mm-hmm. that you are thinking about, considering, you know, analyzing, right? And and n- there's no right or wrong. And that's what I always like to pinpoint. And that's why I'm highlighting all of the school models once a month, because it's important to know there's no right, there is no wrong. Here are your experiences and then here are someone else's experiences from a different right. school model and know and then everybody can just think all right well where do we stand in this so as yep. you said that was your experience nothing was wrong you weren't after something else i have friends who were homeschooled themselves and decided there's no alternative there's no other way this is what we do then i have people who are pri- uh, private schoolers and you know this is all they know and then there are others who are like hey this is us now as mom and dad, let's experience something else. Yeah. And I think it's also important to say, you know, every family can choose what's going to be best for them Mm -hmm. in that stage of their family. Mm -hmm. And that might change. You know, I have some friends that homeschooled for a while and then things changed a little bit Mm -hmm. and they were like, Oh, we need to rely on the public school system right now for a bit. Yep. And, and then that's important too. And we've always said, you know, we're going to take this year by year. Um, I will say the longer that we go, the more deep rooted I think we become Uh in it. But, you know, if if that changes and if God puts something else in our path down the road, then so be it, you know? So I I do know that when we were, when Beckett, my son was five and it was time to, you know, I was watching all of my friends get ready for their firstborns to go to kindergarten. I do remember thinking, man, I'm not ready to give him away. Mm-hmm. You know, like I, I just, I think sometimes, you know, and, and I, I think every mom kind of goes through like a survival stage. Uh, I certainly had mine when my kids were like three and one, I had a really mm-hmm. hard year where I felt like I was constantly drowning. And some of my friends were still feeling that when their kids were kindergarten age. So they were kind of relieved to yeah, yeah. send them off to school and get some time back, which I respect and understand. Mm-hmm. And moms need to do what's going to be best for them. But I just remember thinking, at five, it was like, man, he's just starting to be really fun. You know what I mean? Like the toddler years are, I could send him off to school and not really worry about it, but now he can like converse with me and he's like interested in some things he can play. Like, I don't want to send him off now. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So selfishly for us, it was like, no, I want that time Uh with our kid. And that's still where we are today. So yeah. Awesome. Okay. So 
Can you give us a glimpse of your typical homeschooling day? Now, you did say whenever you sent me your bio that your impulse COVID purchase was <laughs> no big deal, just a house, just a house in Costa this is Rica, true. right? This is true. This is true. And we just recently went to Costa Rica, which you and I were talking about this, and you were like, "No, it's going to be great, whatever." And I did, I didn't, I had no idea what to expect until we arrived, and it's just a, a slice of heaven. It really is. Uh, but your the flexibility, which you've already highlighted, is a big factor. But what Huge. does your every day look like, whether in the U.S. or in Costa Rica? <laughs> Well, it's very different depending on where we are. Now, I will say, uh, like I said, I think I think I can give a lot of hope to people who um, are unsure about homeschooling because they don't know if they're going to be up for it. They don't mm -hmm. know if they're like mom enough for it. Um, I'm not type A at all. I don't know what you call us. I think we're we're too lax to even give ourselves a name, but I'm not type A. And I'm... <laughs> I'm not great with schedules, that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. for me, we decided to homeschool year round. And mm -hmm. what that gave us was the flexibility week in and week out to just do things at our own pace and do things what felt more natural to us. And also to establish just like a rhythm for our life that we don't have to like stop come, you know, May and pick back up in August. It was like, no, we're just going to live. Mm-hmm with this rhythm and it's going to continue to just adjust to what feels natural for our family. So what that means is we actually only have to technically do school like book work type school or whatever you want to call it like three days a week. Mm -hmm. And if I can get my kids in a book uh, for math or handwriting or that kind of stuff, a couple hours, three days a week, I'm doing great. Yeah. That doesn't always happen, but when I'm on top of it, it does. And then the rest of the time, we're just out living life. Like we're just, we have uh, some homeschool groups that we meet out and go on hikes and get into nature. And we, you know, we go on a lot of trips. I'm a travel addict. I mm -hmm. think I told you. Um, we go to Costa Rica. And when we're doing those things, we're not doing book work. The kids are mm -hmm. learning life. Yeah. You know, they're learning culture. They're learning, they're learning the real stuff that they're going to actually carry with them when they're adults. So mm -hmm. It's pretty, yeah. uh, it's pretty laid back over here. I read something in a book called the Fa four hour school day, I believe. Uh, okay. and it's actually when I was reading on the plane on my way to Nashville, whenever I was going to that conference where we met and what she was saying, I believe uh, her last name is Wilson, D Dorinda Wilson, maybe she okay. has eight kids and she was talking about how in each season it, it looked different. And what you said about some days, some weeks, we spend, you know, three days a week into book work because there, there are important skills they have to develop, right? They need to know math and they need to know the handwriting, reading, all these pieces to learning. But whenever you can get though, it, it doesn't have to be, hey, you need to do this for 50 minutes, like what a public school is like, right. you know, as long as you master this skill, Maybe it was in 20 minutes. Maybe it wasn't an hour and a half. Maybe it took them a little longer. Maybe there was some frustration that took place and some bumps that they hit along the way. But that doesn't have to be five days a week in this season where you are right now. Right. Right. Because 100%. Because they're little. There are other skills. In fact, I have a friend who's a business owner and she told me, Kelly, some of my favorite people to hire are homeschoolers. And why do we think that is? All. Right. Why do we think that is? You know, yeah, they have the, they have the life skills they've been, you know, and it's so funny, you know, Instagram has so many homes. Well, at least on my feed, it has a lot yeah. of homeschool yeah. reels. <laughs> yeah. And one of the ones I've really enjoyed lately, just talk about how, uh, like when, when people question how your kids are going to adapt to the real world when they're homeschooled, when they're in the real world, while all the other kids are in a school room, like it's like, yeah, yeah, like we are. <laughs> My kids yeah. are very <laughs> yeah. like, well-rounded. They spend all their time out in the real world. Yeah. And you bring them along. You bring them along the journey. Mm -hmm. I had, uh, I met a publisher a couple weeks ago and, and he said, how do you think, because I told him we homeschool, he's like, well, how do you think that these kids are being prepared for the future? And I just, I was like, am I, am I going to waste my time here and really trying to 
convert this, you know, which is fine. Like I sure. get it. But then I was like, man, so I just gave them some examples. I was like, my kids go to the post office with me. They know what it's like to mail a check, to mail a letter. They know what it's like. They watch me write a check, which doesn't happen in the classroom anymore. They right. know yep. how to budget. We talk about it. I take them to the bank with me. They know how to go up to a teller, look the teller in the eyes and, and make a deposit, ask for a deposit. So, you know, all these things that as adults, that's what we do. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. That was actually one of the things that we brought up when we chose to homeschool is like, the, sure. I mean, we we talked about, you talked about how there's a lot of things in school nowadays that I don't necessarily want my kids exposed to, mm -hmm. but there's also things that I want my kids exposed to that's not in school today, right? Yeah. Like good. I want yeah. them to know how to budget. I want them to know how to run a business. I want them to know my kids in our household, much to my kids' dismay, we don't, we don't give them money. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, we're on a uh, law enforcement income. So like I have three children. I can't yeah. hand out. Wait, I don't have extra money to hand out to them. Right. Um, but we don't give our kids money. We don't give a, our kids allowance. They have friends that get allowance and they see that mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, mom, but I want yeah. money to spend. And I said, well, in the real world, if you want money to spend, you have to generate money. You have to do something. Yep. You have to either make something or provide a service that people are willing to pay for. So I mean, buck up yeah. and let's go. Like, let's figure yeah. it out. And my son, actually both my kids for a while, the reason I can't video you out of my office right now is that for like <laughs> the last the last year-ish, not quite a year, we were they we created a streaming channel where they could sell Pokemon cards. Wow. And I would be there with them, but it was on a legit app where they're selling to like adult Pokemon collectors. That's so cool. And we would buy these, you know, cases of Pokemon cards and I'd run the finances and I'd show them the budget and I'd show them the expenses and I'd show them what we needed for profit. And then that's what we split and all the things, you know, and, and I remember when we first did it, my son was like, I think his very first stream, he sold like $74 of Pokemon wow. cards to adults. He was six or, or seven. And I think it was six when we started. And he was like, and and so we finish a stream. He goes, Mom, can I get my my cut of the $74? And I said, oh, you got like, you technically owe me $4. So no, I'm not going to pay you yet. And he's like, how do I owe you $4? And I was like, because you get profit, not yeah. revenue. There's a difference. And I had to break it down for him at six or seven. Yeah, yeah. You're not getting that in school. Mm -hmm, and, for sure. And to me, that's invaluable. Like that's that's what they'll carry on into adulthood with of being like, okay, my family needs money. What am I going to mm -hmm. do? Well, mm -hmm. time to get creative. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And one of the things that we do at our house, cause we also don't do allowance. We have a sheet that talks about, and I've actually shared about this on Instagram before, but it talks about uh, a job and how much that job pays around the house. Cause there are things mm. like wiping down windows. I don't have the time to just go around and, and wipe down windows. We have a dog, we have little kids, they go sure. put handprints all over. That's one of the jobs that they can do. Raking acorns or leaves and things like that. We have these things on the job sheet. And the one rule is that I can't ask them to do these jobs. They have to initiate in order to get paid. If I ask you to wipe down the windows, you're not getting paid, even though it's on the job sheet. But just that difference between, uh, you know, I earned this, I worked for this, right. I it, I took the initiative. I say it's it's a, it's initiating. That's what it yeah. is. Yeah, 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 for sure. And and that's math, my friends. You know, if you didn't spend, 100%. if you didn't spend the time that week in front of your math workbooks, but you did the spreadsheet, you sold, you were in front of the camera, camera skills, that communication skills, whatever it is, however they do that trading thing. You talk yeah. about so many skills, interpersonal, intrapersonal, that math, so many. A hundred percent. And it's so funny because I was talking to a, a friend of mine who's very type A. I love her to death. <laughs> like the world needs those kinds of people. Right. And, um, and I was telling her, well, we only homeschool you know, we homeschool year round and that lets me do like three ish days a week, a mm -hmm. couple hours on those days and like kind of be loosey goosey. And she did the math and she's like, but that that's only, I think she's like, I don't know the math right now, but 150 some odd hours, not 180 uh -huh. or 150. It only adds up to 150 days of school instead of 180 or whatever it was. And I was like, 
you can't just count book work as school. Right, like, right. We do school 365 days a year. I guarantee mm. it. Yeah. <laughs> but what, like, you're so locked into the school mindset yep. of being like sitting at a desk and flipping through the pages and filling out a worksheet is school. And that's sure that's school. That's not the only way to learn. Yeah. And that, so that's, that's it. I mean, it's school, not the only way to learn. I really like that. So what would you say are some big wins that you guys have experienced? And what about big fails? Cause it's real life. And sometimes, you know, some days are just, just suck. Yeah. Yeah. Um, be, well, I'll, I'll start with the fails because honestly, I'll, I'll be honest. I'm very, uh, I'm very pro homeschool. Like mm -hmm. to me, I don't think it's gonna fit with every single family and every single season of their life necessarily. But like, I, I'm kind of extreme in my mindset about it to the point where I feel like if you are a healthy parent to a child, if you create a healthy household, like you should homeschool for a, at least a, a season and give it a try because I think healthy parents with healthy households can do so much for their kids at home. Um, so I don't feel like I have a whole lot of what I would call losses in homeschool. Sure. Some days are harder, but kids that go to school have hard days at home too. You know what I mean? Like right. that's just, that's just parenting. Uh -huh. Parenting's hard sometimes. Um, actual homeschool related toughness um, for me sticking to a schedule. Sometimes I've tried to do unit studies, man. And I think I've just need to understand that unit studies aren't for me. I can't ever complete them. Yeah. <laughs> I can't get through the whole thing. We do like half of it maybe. And then I'm like, that was super fun. And then I get distracted and we're doing something else. But so I guess that's a kind of a, a learning point. The hardest thing for me, I think right now that I'm experiencing that I was just talking to another homeschool mom about is there's a skill set that you do learn in school that I'm trying to figure out how to teach it outside of school. And it's challenging. And it is the the skill set that kind of ties into impulse control a bit. Where if you're in a classroom setting, like if I'm a child and mm -hmm. I have a lot of energy and a lot of impulses and I'm in a classroom setting, I learn how to control those things because otherwise I'm going to get called out in my classroom. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get singled out and I'm going to be in trouble and it's going to be embarrassing and it's going to be with my peers. So I'm like, I might have these impulses, but I kind of like socially learn how to control them. Right. In homeschool, there's not that social pressure of having to really figure that out. Mm -hmm. And so I find, I mean, we spend a lot of time out in public mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, all day long if we're not home and my kids are old enough to like understand the difference of like our living room and a doctor's office or, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, the bank or the post office or these places. And their seeming, seemingly inability to control themselves when they need to, I'm like, yeah, this one's tough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can, I can say it till I'm blue in the face, but you're not getting it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so, I don't know if you have any tips on that, but that one's tough. Say, right? so, do you want me to chime in? Because I've got some ideas. Yeah, let's or go. We just want to keep talking. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. I, I, my mind is just going. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go since you asked me. Um, first of all, I want to talk about what you said that sometimes they learn these skills in the classroom because otherwise they'll be embarrassed. But I also want to touch on the fact that sometimes they when they have to give so much of their attention to that, they might probably stop listening. They're so focused on this and I don't want to be embarrassed. And now like that consumes their attention to really like stop fidgeting or stop, you know, know how to behave that they probably stop listening to the teacher. Mm -hmm. And so just because they are behaving well, doesn't mean they're engaged mm -hmm. and something whenever I was a classroom teacher, that's something that I would always say that engagement in a classroom, a lot of times looks really chaotic. Why is that? Because they are kids. And, and I'm not talking about like, woo, lack of self-control. That is 100% not what I'm saying, but as kids, how they are engaged is a lot of hands-on stuff. It's a lot of getting up and moving around. In fact, I've got a story and this story is, I've, I've shared it before. 
and it blew my mind. I, it was right after lunch. I just got done teaching the lesson. And so all the kids are sitting, looking really cute, like super put. And as soon as I let them go to start practicing what I just taught on, this one kid, front row, he's in the front row. So that should tell you what kind of kid he was. Front row <laughs> gets up and starts working, standing up. And I was sure. like, I, I'm walking around. I'm like, hey, buddy, can you sit down, please? And he goes, Miss Kegel, I really am focused. I promise I'm working. I just learn better if I'm standing. I have never forgotten that. And that's been about 10 years since I heard that from that child. Mm -hmm. Kids learn differently. And so just because they are misbehaving in a classroom or it looks like misbehaving, sometimes it really is engagement. So that's the one piece, okay, 100%. that I wanted to, yeah. to highlight. Now, the behavior piece that whenever you do go to public places, you do have to behave a certain way. And that's inevitable because not everywhere, you, you know, church is not like home. You cannot hop on the couches if the church has couches. Right, right, right. Uh, yeah. And, and so I, so the communication, so the, the reasons why are so important. For example, hey, we're in a doctor's office. In this space, we talk with our inside voice, and here's why. There are people who aren't feeling well. Maybe some people, their ears hurt. And so if we are loud or if we're moving too much, it really may hurt their ears. You know what I mean? Like putting mm -hmm. them, like tying an emotion to why you behave a certain way. Here, we're in a post office right now. We are quiet because it very, it, it's very echoey in here. And these people are working and they have to focus to make sure they write in the right information to send to this person. Whenever we give our kids why, when, when we tell them why we behave a certain way, that actually helps them understand why they need to behave that way. Right, right, right. So see, it's so funny because I normally will say we're going into a, a, a like a space that's predominantly grown up, so we need to act more like a grown up in here. But I don't necessarily break it down to why are the grown ups acting this way? Yeah, or why is it socially more respectable to, mm -hmm. or respectful to act this way in this space. Yeah. So I, I bet you that would help, especially because it's kind of surprising because I am like, I'm like team why all the way. Like whenever yeah, my kids yeah. are like, why, why, why? I've always been like, I'm going to be the mom that answers it all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and even sometimes, even, even when we answer, we forget, man, if we just physically actually get down on their level, I've done this before and you probably have to, whenever you're looking at the pantry, and there are all these high things at our height. We see so much more of the pantry. And mm -hmm. then you have a kid that's whining because he or she wants something. But you physically get down on their level. The view is completely different of that pantry. You know? And mm -hmm. the view of their world when you physically get down on their level, not only the maturity level, but literally the height. They can't see everything that we are seeing sure. with their eyes. And so they lack the vision, they lack the maturity to even see or understand the world like us, right. you know? And so I, I think that that's one way that you can help emphasize that self-control. And if you think about it, fruit of the spirit, the very last one is self-control, mm -hmm. you know? And so the, it, you know, it's like, it's really important I, that's what I've got three boys. Right. We work on self-control all of the yep. time. And so, you know, it's, it's important for us to just talk to them about it and answer why with examples. Yeah. So I hope that that's helps. good. That's good. I like that. I, the only other thing I would say is, is my own personal, uh, growing area that gets mm -hmm. highlighted, I think in homeschool more than it would otherwise is my reliance on, like my own crutches, I guess, as a parent. So for me, like when we get into really chaotic seasons or I'm overwhelmed, I'll use screens as a crutch. And I'm yeah. generally, I'm generally yeah. pretty like pro limiting screens, yeah. like massively, mm -hmm. but man, do we, get, like, sometimes we just are in seasons and when they're home all day, Every day, it's like we can get in seasons where that becomes too much of a yeah. crutch, and so I have to kind of rein it in for myself. But um, so that's something too. When you know, when you're when they're, you're not sending them out, and you only get, let's say, four hours a day with them, maybe it's a lot easier to be like right, super right. focused and have it exactly how you want. But when you get twenty four hours in a day with your child, it's like, 
You gotta fill it, spill it somehow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Make a yeah, beat. And, and the bathroom's not an option because there's little hands <laughs> right. under the doors. <laughs> right, right. Uh, so, what would you say are some big wins? You've you've shared some things that are hard, and I would yeah. agree with all of those. Yeah. So wins, man. <sighs> I feel like the whole I've, talk I've, has been. Wins. I feel like me and my kids bond is so good kelly it's so good i yeah. i love them so much and i feel like we have such a most of the time we have such a mutual respect of one another that our yeah. conversations and the way that we come to each other about things and the way that we talk through things whether it be curiosities or big feelings or or um just hard, you know, conflict. I mean, we will just sit and we will talk through it in a, such a beautiful way that I'm going to be honest. I don't know if that would have been cultivated. Yeah. If, if we were in a traditional school setting, just because we see so much more of it throughout the day. I mean, we are the, you know, a teacher is not the disciplinarian in our kid's life. It's yeah. us all the time. Right. All the time. And yeah, all the things. And so that has been really beautiful and it's really grown through the years too. I mean, when I was, like I said, in that really unhealthy season, when my kids were toddlers, I was a screamer. I, you know, it's like, I couldn't control yeah. my anger, which was new to me because I'm not an angry person and I'm pretty chill. Um, and that was really scary. So I, my son, when he was three, was able to kind of see a more explosive and impulsive side of me and watching me grow as a mom out of that season and then us be able to build a much more calm and respect respectful and um understanding dialogue with one another has been really fun um so that's, that's definitely awesome. a win and then the, <laughs> the other win man that for me will always be a win is just the amount of trips that we yeah. get to take as a family i mean my yeah. husband doesn't get a whole lot of time off of work so i am known through all of my social circles of being <laughs> the person that just throws the kids in the car and is like, we'll see you in a few weeks. Like we're gone. Wow. And it's so fun. Like all summer long, we just, I mean, it's probably maybe to an unhealthy level of mm -hmm. like my own travel addiction, but it's like, we just love to go places, to visit mm -hmm. people we love, to, to make memories um, my kids are incredible travelers at this point. This last summer I did who one, <laughs> two, three, I think four road trips that were 10 hours wow. each way with them. Um, yeah. and they just were pros, man. They were just yeah. along for the ride. We had the time of our lives and we'll visit local zoos and we'll go see family or friends in different States. And it's just like, it's just a blast. So that's okay, so been really fun. You've highlighted quite a bit. And if I wasn't the homeschooling mom by the end of this chat, I'd be like, okay, well, tell me more. So right, what, yeah. to, to wrap it up, what recommendation would you make to a parent that's interested in this education model? Where, where to start kind of, mm. you know, I don't know, one, two, maybe three things that you'd be like, hey, after this amount of years I've been doing this, if I could go back and start over, this would be the starting point. Yeah. Well, I think first and foremost, you know, if they know someone that homeschools or they could reach out to you or me, um, like reaching out to a fellow homeschooler and asking questions, homeschool moms are like CrossFitters. Like we're yeah. always game to talk about homeschool. Yep. You know what I mean? Like we love it. So yep. we are, we're waving the big homeschool flag, like come talk to us. It's amazing. <laughs> um, so I would say reach, don't feel like, don't to feel too shy or like you're, you know, getting in the way by reaching out. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I actually put this here. I hate, um, I hate book sleeves. I'm not a book sleeve person. Yeah, I'm not so either. it, it doesn't look like this, but I know you would probably recommend the same thing. Ainsley Arment uh -huh. writes the wild and free book. Um, this is Wild and Free Family because I actually loaned the original Call of the Wild and Free to a friend who is now homeschooling that wasn't sure. Um, mm. But I didn't read that until, um, I don't know, maybe a year or so into my homeschooling journey. And to me, that is a great starting place 
to bring you out of this boxed in mindset of what homeschool yeah. has to be and open you up to instead ask, okay, what could it look like for us? Yeah. Um, so I always recommend that book to people call the wild and free just to get your mindset opened up to the possibilities of it. That's awesome. MJ, this was awesome. And like I said, if I hadn't, if I wasn't already a homeschooling mom, which I always say, I'm going to go back a little bit. You said you take it year by year. Right. And when I talk to my friends, I'm like, yeah, I'm loving this, but I also need these other things in the season. And so this year, homeschooling for us has been a gift. It doesn't mean that this is what long term for me, you know, but the benefits are really amazing. And I think one of the ones and me having three boys, I just want to throw this in there. You're not asking me. I'm just going to share it. Go for one, it of the, one of the biggest things that I have loved about homeschooling for our family in a family of three boys is their connection, their mm. relationship. We have a big age gap. You know, my oldest is 12. Then Titus is seven. Micah's five. So that age gap, I always tell my husband, if we went to a traditional school, Levi, our oldest, would just be doing his own thing because he's in a different life stage. Yep. He's almost a teenager. He has his, these interests. And the, the littles are not there because they are together all the time asked to sleep together every night, Mm -hmm. even though they have their own rooms, you know, and that's a gift to that. The gift of time togetherness and that relationship just established, not only the relationship between mom with the kids in motherhood, as you mentioned, but also their relationships. And you see this a lot in homeschooling families is their friends. A hundred percent. I mean, my mom actually yesterday, I think commented on one of my Instagram videos of my girls drawing together and was like, you're just so like, you're so blessed with how well they all play with together. And I'm like, I am, I am super blessed. And also we cultivated that. You know what I mean? (laughs) Exactly. That's exactly it. That's the key point is it's sometimes it's not natural for them to do this. You cultivated it. You saw it and you helped it flourish. Mm -hmm. The gift of time gives you that kind of gives you that permission to do that, to help things flourish. 100%. Right? Awesome. MJ, thank you so much for sharing with us. Okay. So before we go, I do want to hear a little bit more about the Airbnb. Can you tell everybody, <laughs> our listeners real quick, just because we just went to Pura Vida and we experienced it firsthand. Can Pura you Vida, give baby. us the name of your Airbnb, where to find you online, find your house. So all of our listeners, listeners can partake. Cool. Yeah. So we have a home on the coast of Guanacaste in Costa Rica, and uh, it's in a little town called Brasalito, which you will love the name of that, I'm sure. <laughs> and um, it's about 30 minutes out of, outside of a really big tourist town called Timorindo. It's a big surfing area, um, but it's a little Tico town, and it's kind of in between these tourist sites, but it still holds like that Tico feel, which is cool. Um, it's called La Casa Sencilla or the simple house for the English speakers. And um, I have an Instagram and a Facebook and everything that you can, it's uh, the simple house CR for Costa Rica, um, as well as it's linked on mine, which is Mrs. Mm-hmm. MJ cash. Um, and you can definitely rent it on Airbnb, but I will say for anyone that finds it through here, come to me directly. Cause I'll give you better pricing. Okay. <laughs> What we're going to do, MJ, is I'm going to send you an email here in a little bit, and you can send us these links. I'll put cool. them on my website, drkellycagle.com slash parenting IQ. You can find all of these things along with some of the highlights of our chat on the website. MJ, thank you again for spending some time with us, shedding some light on the homeschooling life. I appreciate you so much, you friend. Thank you so much, Kelly. I appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. Okay, lifelong learners, I hope that you feel more equipped to bring learning to everyday moments regardless of the school model of your choice.